Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Now, I'm feeling a sense of deja vu here. Now, it seems like only yesterday that I was taking Collateral Beauty to task for its misleading trailer. And only a short time before that, I was describing Allied as a movie whose only benefit was its two appealing stars in fabulous costumes walking through some great production design. All of these things are also true of Passengers, but whereas I didn't recommend those ultimately, I actually found Passengers to be pretty diverting despite its many, many flaws. So hey, let's talk about it. It's The Martian meets Wally, kinda. That's the setup for this movie that I will attempt to discuss without spoilers, except to say that once again we have a trailer which leaves out a pretty major character motivation that will change how you think of the main plot. But that plot is this. There's this enormous spaceship containing 5,000 passengers and about 250 crew, all of whom are supposed to be cryogenically frozen for 120 years as they travel to a new life on a distant planet. Then one day, Chris Pratt's character just wakes up in his cryopod 90 years too early. He's got the whole ship to himself, plenty of supplies and recreation to live out the rest of his days, and with his engineering background, enough time and skill to learn how to fix almost any mechanical problems that may crop up. Except, of course, he can't go back to sleep in his cryopod and there are no other humans around, and there won't be any until long after he's dead. Some of the best scenes of this movie are simply Chris Pratt figuring out his daily routine and going through a fascinating journey of curiosity, creative problem solving, depression, loneliness, and coping mechanisms, and occasionally having a drink with the cyborg bartender played extremely well by Michael Sheen. And we have to ask ourselves the questions, well, how did he wake up, and why him? And no matter how fun it can be to watch movies, play video games, and grow a really sweet beard, how long can you distract yourself from the fact that you're trapped in space all by yourself, and you will die in space all by yourself? Then, sometime later, Jennifer Lawrence is woken up as well. And hey, well, now at least he's got someone to spend his life with, and someone hot too. Score! <laughs> Am I right, fellas? Suddenly the movie switches gears and we're thrust into a sort of a romance movie that is compelling and fun and due to some insanely potent chemistry between its two lead actors, it's pretty hot. Yep. I mean, these are really the most likable and appealing stars of the moment right now and you as the audience really want to see them together and you're thrilled when they do get together. Which is probably why I forgot or glossed over or forgave or just generally sidestepped the dark cloud hanging over their romance. One of the characters in this movie does something unconscionable. You see them have the idea, you see them talk themselves out of it, you understand completely their reason for wanting to do it, you see them agonize over their decision, and you see them ultimately do it, and you are haunted by it right along with them afterward. It's, it's really awful what this person does. But the movie, or the, at least the script, tends to want to give this person a pass and sort of asks you to do it as well. This movie stacks the deck so in favor of true love, in part because, well, you kind of want it to. And the really compelling relationship that develops between these characters sort of gets sidelined when the gears shift yet again, and more things start going wrong with the ship, and the rest of the film becomes a conventional, explosion-filled, science fiction, space disaster movie where the questions about interpersonal relationships and meditations on the idea of becoming disconnected from humanity, which were really pretty compelling, they all take a backseat to questions that you had asked yourself in the beginning but had forgotten. So, uh, why did they wake up? And what's going wrong with the ship? Ooh, look, Jennifer Lawrence is trying to escape from a zero-gravity ball of water. That looks pretty cool. Now, who or what is responsible for the boom, explosions, danger, heroics, climax, and we're done. In the end, we get deposited at a conclusion that just sort of left me shrugging. There was a really good and thoughtful movie about isolation in there. There was a conventional disaster movie plot with a bunch of 3D effects and science fiction contrivances like reactor cores and airlocks and other sci-fi mumbo-jumbo. And there was also a romance with a kind of dark twist running through its center. The problem is that all of these elements work individually and kept me, at worst, mildly entertained and at best, on the edge of my seat. They just didn't fit well together. And the more discerning viewer may find this is a fatal flaw in the movie. Others may find that the dark twist I'm referring to is also an insurmountable obstacle towards enjoyment of the film, while others will simply wave it off because they like the romance and it's set within the construct of a fantasy world and what a gorgeous looking fantasy world it is, and so on and so forth. As for me, I fall into the latter category. I award passengers a medium bag of popcorn. I, I sort of love spending time in the company of Star-Lord and Katniss Everdeen. I marveled at the fantastical setting with lots of thrilling 3D space action and a beautifully designed spaceship that would put Wally's axiom to shame. But uh, hey, what can I say? The movie does have its flaws. There's plenty to nitpick here if you so desire. But overall, this thing, sloppy as it was, actually made for a solid entertainment when all was said and done. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more, and support us by clicking subscribe while you're there, and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. 
I'd like to hear your thoughts on passengers in the comments section as well. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and there's a reason we woke up early.